hello 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 welcome back to my channel and as you can see i'm in miami at soul flow cake and candy expo and today i wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes how i go about creating my designs so decide on how many flowers i need to use at this point i'm preparing to do an installation for the american cake decorating magazine and this picture is my inspiration and i wanted to create a vignette like this where with monstera leaves and palm leaves and beautiful flowers. This is another great idea for you to find inspiration. I went to a craft store and I found this scrapbooking paper. And you can see it also has monstera leaves and palm leaves. That's what I'm going to use as an inspiration for my colors, with the lighter, lighter green tones, blue tones, darker tones. So I love this color palette. This is going to be an inspiration for my colors that's what i'm going to use and for my color because on here on this inspiration i do see these beautiful peonies and i wanted to mimic the look of these peonies i'm going to use my wafer paper edible flowers and i have a tutorial on how to make those so i think this is going to be a great alternative uh, first of all because they are much quicker to make and second of all because i do think that something takes and fluffy is going to look great on this installation. Also because I'm demonstrating a class how to make wafer paper orchids, I'm going to add my wafer paper orchids to my arrangement. So let's get started. And what's interesting for the project like this, I usually use a lot of things I have on hand. I want things I wanted to reuse or finish up using because right here I have a few uh, wafer paper pieces. This is a degrade or like regular wafer paper that I airbrushed using forest green airbrush color. So this is going to be my base for those large monstera leaves. But also I have this green pre-colored wafer paper from icing images and I'm going to use this as a backup for my pieces. So what I'm going to do for that, because I wanted to sandwich my wafer paper and use two layers. I'll take a silicone mat. This is just regular baking mat or the one I use all the time. For this application, I'm going to use Flexic. So Flexic is a gelatin based mixture that is clear when it dries and it helps to sandwich wafer paper or at least I use it for wafer paper. So this is going to be my face side and I have a silicone brush and my Flexic that I melted in a microwave. And I'm going to apply one layer of Flexic on the face side of this wafer paper as thin as possible. And I actually added a little bit more water to my Flexic mixture because I do have time to let it dry for longer, but I wanted to make it a little bit thinner so it's easier to spread on my Viva paper. So this is the face side. And I'm going to turn it on the other side and stick it to my silicone mat to make it flat or as little wrinkles as possible. And then I'm going to apply another layer of this mixture on the back. And I will place on top another piece of wafer paper that is pre-colored. And this is going to be my baking. No ear bubbles, please. And then I will set it aside. So when it dries, you can see how flexible it gets. But because it's a little bit too soft for me, I will set it aside for maybe another 24 hours until it thickens. And then I can cut my monstera leaf out of this. And now for my monstera leaves. Because the shape of monstera leaf is like uh, more like a heart, I'm going to cut my leaf paper in half. And this is uh, two layers of paper paper with Flexic. So I'm going to cut it diagonally in half and cut two leaf shapes, or like heart shaped leaves for my monster. So a smaller one like this. And I can cut this one a little bit larger. 
And then I'm going to imagine a center line and a few pieces how monstera leaves are growing. If you have something like a marker, you can mark it with your marker. Just to give me an idea where I can cut my leaf shapes. So I'm going to cut in between these lines. Okay, here's my one leaf. And same I do for another one. And to color my monster leaves, I'm going to use gel colors. I have here my yellow that I used for my orchids. So I'm going to take just a touch of color. And all I wanted to do is to highlight part of my leaf. I don't need to color the whole leaf. So I just wanted to add a little bit of differences in color. And I have this blue shade. This is going to be my low lights or darker parts of my monster. Because I have this picture, here is my main inspiration for my monster leaves and that's what I'm looking to decide what colors to paint. So you can see just a little bit of color here in some parts. Like this. And the last few steps I have is to add more highlights and color differences. I'm going to use brown marker and make my lines more visible. Like that. And my favorite last step that brings everything together is to use an edible paint. I have the poppy paint in white. And I'm going to use a thin brush and paint with white color on top of my brown line. And now I have my monstera leaf. And for my tropical leaves, I'm going to try this smart uh, sheets by Icing Images. It's supposed to work like a wafer paper, but you can see it has uh, no texture on one side and this coarse bumpy texture on another side. It is much thicker than wafer paper, but it's supposed to be flexible and not cracking. To color my wafer paper here, and this way these smart sheets, I have a mixture of different ingredients here. Mainly I have green gel color, a touch of black airbrush color, that's what I have on hand, a touch of blush gel color, and my acetonic non-alcoholic wafer paper conditioner uh, to thin it out and make it lighter. And I'm going to use a fan brush like this and paint a few stripes because I wanted to have this uneven color to mimic the texture. And I will set it aside for a minute before starting the next step. And for the next step, I wanted to airbrush this wafer paper because I wanted to even up the color. And I'm going to use the same mixture, but to light it up, I'm going to add a touch of ivory gel color, mix it together. If I'm going to test this new color on the side, it's a little bit different shade of green, but now I need to water it down. I'm going to use my acetonic mixture. And I'm going to use my airbrush to color this wafer paper. Now that I have my airbrush, this is cordless airbrush gun, and I have my piece of wafer paper already colored. I'm going to gently airbrush that with this lighter green color. Now I have this beautiful multicolored base for my palm leaves and I will set it aside and continue working on my wafer paper smart sheets. 
Also, another great tip, if you look at my table, I have a plastic wrap all around, so it's easier to clean because these airbrush colors can be very hard to clean out of your table. So I usually use a piece of plastic wrap on my table before airbrushing. And now that I have my smart sheets by Asin Images dry, you can see I painted with uh, just a brush and then airbrushed it over. And I added a little bit of blush color. So you can see the spots are sparkly and very beautiful. So I wanted to cut it using my cutting machine. You don't need to, you can use a pair of scissors. This just, I find it's a little bit easier. And I wanted my stripes to be about maybe one centimeters or half an inch. So I'm going to cut it half an inch cutting my wafer paper to this thickness so something like this and now that I have my stripes so I'm going to cut them in half and then because I wanted to shape them I'll start with a few pieces at a time and I wanted to cut this sharp on one end and a little bit longer and thinner on the other end like this i'm going to take my dresden tool and just run it in the middle to fold the sleeves in half and i needed to make sure that here at the bottom i pinch it together to remember which side is going to be the side i'm going to use to attach this to a stem and i will assemble roughly how I want this to look and bend these pieces over to two sides like this and then I will need another piece maybe a little bit shorter to be my top piece here and I'll shorten it out like that and I'm going to take a 20 gauge wire to be my base probably half width is going to be enough and i'm using light green floral tape so i cut my floral tape in half and that's what i'm going to use to attach my leaves i'll start with a small piece stretching it out and attaching this top leaf to my wire okay to make sure it's not going anywhere and then i'll start adding leaves to both sides of this first leaf like that a few layers down and you can see that i'm using this thin part of my palm leaf to attach it to my wire and tape it around maybe another half an inch down on both sides and two more leaves on either sides of my wire and i'm going to tape it down and move it around so this is an idea i have for my palm leaves so i'll probably continue building these palm leaves and this shape so you can see it's starting to look like a palm leaf and because my wafer paper is still soft and pliable i can move it around and i can shape it the way i want it to but this is the idea and i'll continue making more of these decorations and for my orchids i'm going to use my cutting machine i have silhouette camera i'll show you in a second and my file as you can see here i create my own templates and i put it on a sheet of wafer paper so all i need to do is to load my wafer paper i use searching wafer paper for this application because it's a little bit thicker and i find it's easier to cut and i use my food safe cutting mask that i make myself for wafer paper because we need to use food safe uh, tools with edible materials So I loaded my cutting mat and all I need to do is to press send and it will start cutting my wafer paper petals. 
I also will put a link down below for my v Paper Academy. I have this course, how to use cutting machines with v Paper as a bonus with my academy. So link is going to be in the description. And now I have all my orchid petals in almost no time. And I can make four orchids out of one piece of FIFA paper. So now I assembled my orchids. I have a full tutorial on my YouTube channel, so I will put the link down below. Now what I need is to paint them. All I need is to add a touch of yellow here at the center. And I wanted this orchids to be bright. And for my stripes, airbrush color and a thin brush. This is double zero and a few lines just here at the center of my orchid. I just happen to like this color combination like this. So I'm packing my things. That's what I made for the Soul Flow American Cakes Decorating Magazine installation. My monster leaves. These are the same, just a different color. My orchids and my flowers. Also my beautiful palm leaves. And here my final arrangement. You can see all the leaves and flowers. I think they do look like that picture. And here all our decorations, our booth. So here you can take pictures of yourself. Here I'm going to do my demonstration later today. American Cake, American Cake Decorated Magazine is the one I am getting into my mail every month. That's the magazine I'm subscribed to. And you can learn how to make a lot of designs, especially if you wanted to learn how to make cakes and decorations like flowers and how to make, uh, how to make cookies and different decors for your cakes and sweet meats. Now you know how Soul Floor Cake and Candy Expo looks from the inside. I hope you enjoy this tour and you see today in Miami is beautiful weather. It's not so hot, so I'm going to grab something to eat and I'll see you in the next tutorial.